You know, the last time this committee received testimony from Mr. Becker, the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank, he was lobbying Congress, us, uh, to do away with the Dodd-Frank rules designed to protect our nation's banking system. Now, unfortunately, too many people in Congress listened, and now here we are, three bank collapses later, picking up the pieces of Mr. Becker's successful efforts at deregulation. In recent reviews of the failures of SVB and Signature Bank, regulators found that weakened bank rules helped cause this crisis. They also found that each of the witnesses here today were repeatedly warned that their extreme risk-taking was dangerous. Now, instead of paying attention to those warnings, Mr. Becker, Mr. Shea, and Mr. Howell took on more risks so they could boost their own paychecks. Mr. Becker, you were SVB CEO from 2011 until it failed in March. In 2019, the year after Congress gave you what you wanted and voted to weaken the banking system's guardrails, you got a 35% pay bump. Not, not bad for a single year. In fact, your pay increased by nearly $3 million. Now, that same year that you got the pay bump, nearly five years ago now, how many active supervisory issues had the Fed identified and warned your bank about? Senator, I don't, I don't recall the specific number that we would have had in 2019. Well, you ran the bank, Mr. Becker. Do you want to take a guess? One, two, a dozen? I would guess it would be in the 10 to 15. Well, 17. 17. Same year. You got a $10 million paycheck. The Fed had warned SVB of 17 unresolved supervisory issues. Now, your bank had issues with capital planning. It had issues with liquidity risk management. And the bulk of the issues identified by the Fed focused on weak governance. It was a litany of management failures. By the time SVB failed, more than four years later, it had 31 unresolved, that's what the public record shows, 31 unresolved supervisory issues. But the big paychecks for you kept rolling in. During that four-year period, you collected almost $40 million. Mr. Becker, the collapse of your bank cost the FDIC fund about $20 billion, money that someone is going to have to make up. Big banks, community banks, depositors, consumers, somebody. So I want to know about basic accountability. How much of the $40 million that you earned from loading up SVB Bank with risk are you planning to return to the FDIC? Senator, if I could clarify one point, and then I'll answer your, your, your question. Um, Compensation, I know there's been a lot of discussion about is it long-term or short-term, and it's short-term focused. I, I have a very simple question. You cost the FDIC fund $20 billion. You made $400 million doing that. How much are you planning to return to the fund? Senator, I disagree with the number you just quoted. But what, you don't, that's not your paycheck? or it's not how much it costs the FDIC. Senator, Those are both a matter of public record. How much are you planning to return to the fund? Senator, the number you just quoted was $400 million. Uh, $40 million, sorry, $40 so I was million. disagreeing with that. How much of the $40 million are you planning to return? How many times are we going to do this dance? Senator, I promise to cooperate with the regulators as they do. Are you planning to return a single nickel to what you cost the fund? Senator, I know there's going to be a process review of compensation. I'll take that I'll as a no. All right, so let's turn to our next one, Mr. Shea. Mr. Shea, Signature Bank's leadership was right there with Mr. Becker. Mr. Shea, you were the chair of Signature's board for the entirety of its 22-year existence. I understand you were also the chair of the Risk Committee for 22 years. So let me ask you, in 2019, once Congress weakened the laws, how many formal warnings from the FDIC about your bank's liquidity risk management issues were outstanding? Don't know? Does number 18 sound right? Yes. Yeah, okay. 
In fact, you were still chair of the risk committee in 2020, 2021, and 2022 when Signature received more warnings from the FDIC and, quote, never adequately address the liquidity risk management concerns. So from 2019 to 2023, while the FDIC identified an additional 45 liquidity risk issues, you racked up more than $20 million in pay. So, Mr. Shea, the collapse of your bank cost the FDIC fund $2.5 billion. So how much of the $20 million that you earned from loading up Signature Bank with risk are you planning to return to the FDIC? I believe that Signature Bank was a what responsibly managed bank, solvent until the end. Yeah, well, I'm and sorry. Your is, opinion on I what is not. a responsibly and managed bank is, no. is now laughable. So you're planning to return how much? The answer is none. That's I it? I'm not planning to do so, no. Okay, so here's the thing. Right now, the law says that people like Mr. Becker and Mr. Shea can come to Washington, they can lobby for weaker bank regulations, they can load up their banks with risk, they can pay themselves tens of millions of dollars in bonuses and stock options, and when the banks blow up, Mr. Becker and Mr. Shea get to keep all the money. And that is just plain wrong. And if we don't fix it, every CEO for these multi-billion dollar banks will keep right on loading up on risks and blowing up banks and everybody else is going to have to pay for it. And that is why Senator Cortez Masto and Senator Hawley and Senator Braun and I have introduced a bill to claw back these crazy paychecks and make it just a little less profitable for bank CEOs to blow up the banking system. I'm working with a bipartisan group right here on the banking committee, and I hope Congress does the right thing and that we get to mark this bill up, I ask respectfully, uh, as soon as possible.